Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring Cultos Innombrables. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this role-playing game where you play as the cultists, as the wielders of the powers of the mythos, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about the system, specifically checks and aspects. This role-playing game uses the milestones system that is quite popular in Spain. In this system, to make checks, you roll three ten-sided dice. One result, the lowest result, is going to be the minor result. The highest result is going to be the major result. And the center result is the one in the middle, of course. But sometimes you will roll doubles or triples. In that case, the central result is going to be the same as the minor or the major result. Usually during checks, you're going to count the center result for the purpose of beating a check, of being successful at a task. The game master is going to give you a target number, so you're going to add that central result or result in the middle to your attribute and skill that are relevant or related to the check or test and that's going to give you a result to see if you beat the target number. But what if you roll three tens or two tens or three ones or two ones? Then that's going to result in a critical hit or a critical success or a fumble or critical failure. So tens are good, ones are bad. These effects could last a scene or the entire session. If you roll two ones, your fumble is going to present some negative things or penalties for the duration of a scene. If you roll three ones, it's going to last for the rest of the session. That is, you're going to have a, a penalty, a potential penalty applied to you for the rest of that session. If you roll two tens, it works similarly. That means you get a positive or potentially positive thing for the duration of that scene. If you roll three tens, it's going to last for the entire session. When it comes to contested tests or checks, the highest result wins. When it comes to prolonged tests, you need to score a number of successes. Perhaps you have limited time to accomplish something. The typical situation in which you are trying to fix things in a limited time, perhaps some complex machinery, or when you are trying to handle a chase scene, maybe you have a number of successes or failures before you catch your prey or your quarry or whatever or maybe you are being chased down yourself and if you fail the prolonged test two or three times that is you failed three check results then you're going to end up captured perhaps so there's a lot of potential flexibility when it comes to handling these roles and because the milestones system is quite broad concerning skills, that is, perhaps you have the skill of knowledge in ancient weaponry. Now you can apply this in a variety of situations as long as it makes sense. Maybe you were chased into a museum and there is a crossbow, a disassembled crossbow on display. Now you can perhaps break the glass in the exhibit and make your check using that skill to see if you can assemble the crossbow and use it as a weapon against your pursuers. Now let's talk about aspects because this is very important to understand the checks. Because I mentioned that when you get a critical result, you obtain some uh, positive or negative things depending on the number of dice that resulted in that critical failure or success. So if you obtain, like I said, two ones or two tens, it's going to last for the entire scene. If you rolled three ones or three tens, it lasts for the entire session. So what is this thing that lasts for a scene or a session? This is called an aspect. In the milestones system, each character has aspects. It could be related to your description, to your abilities, to your milestones, that is the background events of the character, the complications, anything. It represents a sort of tag. So these aspects could be from your own character sheet. They could be related from a particular situation. That is the environment in which you are moving. 
It could also be related to non-player characters, that is, aspects of non-player characters that are your enemies or allies, or they could be implicit aspects. They are not as overt or as obvious, but you know that they are there. Let me give you some examples. When it comes to your own aspects, maybe you have the background of you were a private detective once that ended up killing someone in a back alley. So now you have aspects such as private detective, killer, anything that you can think related to that particular moment in the character's life. Or maybe like I said, it's related to your skills. Maybe you have advanced knowledge in hacking. Maybe you know how to plant seeds to uh, get some crops going. All of that could serve as aspects for different checks. We will talk about how this works in a few moments. Then we have, like I said, aspects related to other characters, non-player characters. Maybe a non-player character is a librarian. Maybe a non-player character is an archaeologist. All of those aspects could also be used in your checks. Then when it comes to situation aspects, it could be related to the environment in which you are moving. Like I said, maybe you are moving through a yard and there is a lot of junk. Now you have the aspects of yard and junk to work with. And when it comes to implicit aspects, maybe you are using a flashlight. So now you have the aspect of battery. Because flashlights usually work with some sort of battery or some sort of power source that's an implicit aspect so how can you use these aspects you can activate them by using drama or dramatic points so this resource is used that is one point per aspect that you wish to activate in order for the aspect to work in your favor so like i said maybe you are moving through this yard and you want to activate the junk aspect to create some improvised weapon or some tool that you need at the moment you spend your point to make a roll but in this case the three dice are going to work a little bit differently instead of counting the central result you are going to count the major result the highest die for the purposes of that check but there is some other thing if you rolled any sort of doubles on the other two dice and if they are higher than the major result you are going to count those instead so maybe you rolled a five and two fours four plus four equals eight so that's greater than the major result and you're going to use that eight for the purpose of that check and it works the other way around if the game master wants to activate an aspect against you maybe you have a limp or maybe your character has some sort of injury maybe you're trying to make a jump or climb the game master could activate the game director could trigger these aspects and the game director has an unlimited number of drama points so he or she can spend a point to trigger this aspect against you and now you need to make your roll but you're going to count the minor result and if you roll doubles that is, maybe you rolled a two and you rolled two threes. Those threes are added for a total of six and this counts as a negative number, as a minus six and it's going to take priority when compared to the lower result, to the minor result. Now, every time this happens, the game master or the player will have to give one of these drama points, as I mentioned, to the other one. So when a player activates an aspect using these drama points, that player is going to give the game master a drama point. But because the game master has an unlimited number of these points, that point only counts as a lost point. But when the game master activates an aspect against a player character, he gives the player of that character a drama point. And that's how there is a certain balance of giving and taking points. It's up to the player to decide when it's worth it to actually spend these drama points or when it's a better idea to let the game master apply those negative aspects to your character and you save those drama points for later because you can cancel the application of aspects against your character. So maybe that player doesn't want his or her character 
to suffer the effects of some negative aspect brought forth by the game master, he or she can spend a drama point to cancel that out. And as a last resort, if you don't have drama points, you can spend your aspects, you can make them invalid for the rest of the session, so to speak. So maybe your character has the background of being a fireman and you want to find a way to put out some fire with an advantage to your role, but you don't have drama points remaining, you can spend your aspect, you can ruin it to put it in a way for the rest of the session. And now you make that role with the advantage that I mentioned of counting the major result, counting doubles that are above the major result as the number for that check, etc. But now you could be thinking, and how is this related to critical hits or successes and fumbles? When you make a critical success, you create an aspect that usually works in your favor, of course, and when it results in a fumble, then a new aspect is created that is to the disadvantage of your character. So let's say that you want to jump down certain steps. You know, you want to jump a, a good section of a flight of stairs because you are either being chased down or you are chasing someone. You make your roll, and if it's a critical success, then let's say that you roll two tens. Then your character jumps that quite successfully and you immediately catch the non-player character that you are pursuing. And because of the momentum, you can trigger that aspect in that same scene for a similar effect. Maybe now you want to do some parkour movements and you want to jump from the second floor to the first floor while landing in a somewhat safe way. So that aspect could be called momentum. But what if you roll three tens? Now that aspect lasts for the entirety of the session. Maybe that aspect is called man of action you suddenly realize that you are quite athletic. It turns out that those sessions of exercise actually paid off and you are actually capable of doing some extraordinary things. This could be activated with your drama points or by spending that aspect during the rest of the session. But what if you get two ones? You jump down that flight of stairs and now you injured yourself. You have twisted ankle. But because it's only two ones as a result, it only lasts for the rest of that scene. But the game master or game director can activate that aspect so that you have a difficult time chasing down your enemy or escaping from your pursuers. And if you rolled three ones, well, now you have a serious injury for the rest of that session that is going to be nagging you probably, depending on how the game master or game director is going to use it against your character. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, I am going to talk about combat and other actions. I like this system because there is a certain element of strategy or tactics to it. You have to plan out ahead how you're going to be spending your drama points and you have to consider when it's worth it to spend those aspects. But this is definitely not a system for power gamers or power players or for those that are more interested in playing the system rather than playing the game. That is, this can be exploited. So it is up to the players and the game master or game director to focus more on letting the story take shape organically and using these resources, of course, to be successful at different situations, but it also needs to make sense with the context, with the background of the character, with the results of the dice, of course, depending on the critical hits and fumbles, all of that. Thank you for watching this part of the review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending right through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.